If women don't help each other, if we don't give opportunities to each other, who will? Hello, my name is Beatrice. Uh, I run an NGO for autistic uh, adults. Uh, we are called AIDA. At the same time, I'm also an entrepreneur and I run a startup uh, that is also building a platform for autism. I think for me, I've come a very long way from uh, where I used to be. I've spent the last 15 years navigating a very tumultuous healthcare and mental healthcare journey where I have been misdiagnosed with multiple different uh, mental illnesses until about a couple of years ago where somebody spotted something and uh, finally diagnosed me correctly with autism. It had been a interesting journey. I would never call anything difficult because I think that's life. We generally have a very low and stigmatized view of people with mental health labor and especially now, uh, a lot of us don't understand autism. I almost always feel that I live in a world where it's not built for me because everything is too bright, too loud, um, too difficult to understand and um, a very stigmatized how society uh, has a very stigmatized view on people with autism, the meltdowns that we have. Uh, and because I'm very public with who I am, I, I write a lot about my journey uh, and I'm a very me vocal mental health advocate that has essentially made me unemployable in the eyes of a lot of people. So I have to speak louder, tell my story a lot more for people to understand where we come from and I have to find my own path in life to become an entrepreneur. I don't know if it's a strength, but I know from early on, I certainly view the world very differently. I, I know that my perception of the world is very different and uh, as I understand myself more with my late diagnosis, I now know why I am very, very meticulous with certain things and I'm starting to learn how my brain processes information. So I certainly look at things in a very systematic way. You know, I'm a visual thinker uh, and that really changed how I uh, navigate around how I could plan things, how I am, I could imagine things that people can't just by absorbing information that people don't usually think is important. Uh, and I think one of the things that I've always thought was normal, but until recently I realized that not a lot of people actually remember everything that they read. So from a very young age, um, I could flip a book and I would remember everything on every single page. I mean, I. I, I would like to see that it's a strength because it means that like, you know, um, I always believe that knowledge is power. The more you know, the more you are able to find languages to express yourself about the things that you believe in, your convictions. Um, so I would like to say that like, you know, me being able to hold on to knowledge and information had really been a blessing. always been called a Miss Know-It-All um, and I think people had always like laughed about it um, but it had also made me very analytical and being able to see the forest for the tree had been a very important skill for me especially in my years in production being a producer it helped me in finding uh, solutions so I always have a plan A, plan B, plan C and I think as a TV producer that really is a strength <laughs> because Anytime that you're on a shoot day, whatever that could go wrong, would go wrong. But aside from that, it had also helped me into understanding how community and society work, which is kind of an ir irony because I don't really integrate into a lot of different groups. Uh, I never quite felt like I belong and I've always felt like I was an outside observer, despite me not being able to intuitively do that for myself. But that helped me to also form a lot of uh, opinions, a lot of ways in uh, solution-based that I'm now 
uh, putting into my tech startup. I think that has been the, a gift that I really uh, enjoy and I've really found it as a blessing to be able to think that way so that I now in turn can also help women who are like me. Hopefully this way of thinking and my thought process you know, could help uh, girls not be as lost as me and to grow up not having to navigate uh, the stigma that I've had to go through. Equity and also inclusion and especially in understanding the diversity of the many different type of uh, neurotypes people around uh, in our society. We certainly don't understand people who are different because we are always scared of what we don't know. And I'll always remember this incident uh, where in trying to get a lot of my medical records back on track and also uh, when I was going through my diagnosis because I had been wrongfully put into a psychiatric ward before and being given different type of treatment that I shouldn't have been and one day I turned up and tried to get my medical records and because it shown on the record that I was an ex-psychiatric patient I could truly see that the fear in the receptionist eye, the admin clerk who was supposed to give and she was afraid and there is also this uh, unseen rule where they actually told me that like hey uh, we can't give it directly to you because you're a psychiatric patient and that was for the very first time that I finally realized how little equity and how little autonomy I have over my own life and that is how stigma works against people like uh, people like me with a lot of all these challenges. It obviously agitated me and I had to call someone else and that person is of no relation of me and somehow he had managed to gain her trust to actually pass him information about me. And that put you as a person into a spot of feeling how small and how little that you are and, and that shouldn't be the way of how we treat people who are different. From that incident, I have made it a mission or somewhat a calling on spending the next half of my life in building solutions, businesses, writing, advocating. And I feel that everyone needs to uphold this right and especially even more with people who are ostracized because they are different. As a society, we need to be able to scaffold them and put them and elevate them above so that their voice and their experience is also being heard and being made valid in every space in this life. I mean, things are changing, but we could also see that women don't often get elevated. Uh, and especially if you're already different and you're a woman, um, you're facing a lot more challenges. So when I look at who are the people who are helping me in producing the uh, work that I want to, my team that I'm building, the beneficiary from the social enterprise that I'm building, I am looking at it from end to end to involve my community, to involve women-led companies. Because if women don't help each other, if we don't give opportunities to each other, who will? <laughs>